Hello, everyone. I'm so excited that um, you have all decided to join us tonight. We have um, been preparing for this for a while. Um, I, a lot of you I have met and I know, and I'm so just thankful and gratitude that you're here with us tonight to um, be with Tyler, who I have only met just recently, but have formed an incredible relationship with. And when I was able to give him the story about what we're doing um, with Bloom here and how we are helping women come back um, into society with dignity and with grace um, by providing a two-year program, rent, dental, and mental free, um, Tyler just looked at me and was like, oh my God, I have to be a part of this. <laughs> and so <laughs> when he did that, I was like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I, will, I would be amiss to not say thank you to Megan, who is one of our board members that really helped us um, get in touch with Tyler and find him. And he's been a light for me for the last couple of weeks as we've talked and we've gone through what we're doing. And so for all of you that have joined us tonight, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for supporting Bloom Here, the program. And you're not supporting just me. What you're supporting is the women of the home, that the women of the home are bigger than me. They are stronger than me. They are amazing. They are women that um, are fighting for their lives and um, have just been willing to take and embrace what we are doing at Bloom Here. And once again, it's a program, two years, rent, dental, and mental free. Also, we have a justice enterprise where the women will come to work and they will be able to make body oils, which we'll talk about that. Um, Tyler has them, he's been using them, he loves them. Um, but we also help them um, providing jobs and we'll be providing jobs, which I think is huge for us. So um, I don't wanna take up too much time, but what I do wanna say is thank you again. And I would like to go into introducing the chair of our board, who is Richard Avert, who is um, a strength to me and a strength to all of us that serve on the board. He um, is just amazing. He gives us, as you can see on your screen now, hope, love, and faith. <laughs> I was able to meet Richard about a year ago. And um, when I met him, he was like, I'm on, I'm on board, Melinda. Let's do this thing together. So he's partnered with me and I'm um, partnered with the girls at the Bloom Here House. And I am just so, so excited to, for all of you to join because tonight really is about hope love and faith and I think that's what our world needs right now and I'm just very excited so I will let Richard Richard take it away thank you Melinda good evening everyone welcome to bloom here presents teaching social justice from the stage as Melinda said my name is Richard Averett I am the board chair of bloom here and for those you don't know bloom here is a nonprofit organization which provides women survivors of abuse addiction prostitution and trafficking a safe place to live and the space and resources to heal. We support the well-being of women so that it may nurture their own resilience as we provide opportunities for them to grow into a life of economic independence through our justice enterprise. I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming tonight and supporting our organization. We recently celebrated our one-year anniversary and to watch the growth of these women and their lives and empowering them these survivors has been truly amazing. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. In addition to being board chair, I'm also the vice president of marketing for Twickenham Holdings. We are the Papa Murphy's Pizza franchise in North Carolina, Alabama, and Tennessee. And our organization is proud to support Bloom here and their mission, not only because they empower women, because they create economic independence through our justice enterprise. This is a very unique nonprofit, and we're very pleased to have Melinda lead our organization. Melinda not only has a server's heart, but she has a high business acumen, which not only empower these women, but create opportunities with them. And we can't think, we can't think of a better person to lead our organization. Papa Murphy's Pizza and Twickenham Holdings is more, very happy to underwrite tonight's program. And in addition to this, moving forward, I'd like to announce for the remainder of 2020, every online order with the code GIVE25 that's entered, Papa Murphy's will donate 25% of every order online. And again, every order with GIVE25 in the code, we will donate 25% to Bloom here in their mission. 
I'd like to thank a few people tonight in addition to Melinda. I'd like to thank Lisa Jeffries and Rollywood Media for producing this event. I'd like to thank Tyler again for hosting event and talking about a very important subject in, in, the, in the landscape right now. And it's, it's sometimes it's a hard conversation, but it's a conversation needs to be had. And we appreciate everyone who submitted questions. And we like to ask you all keep an open mind and, and hopefully you'll come away with this, with some things to think about and make, uh, make this world a little better. Finally, I'd like to introduce tonight's MC. Uh, he is one of the hosts of Sports Channel 8, heard on 99.9 The Fan. He's also co-host of Podcast Raleigh, and he's a friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayes Permar. Richard, thanks so much for the introduction. We've already taken too much time, but I'm going to continue to talk. Richard, I'm going to bag on you a little bit. That was way too stiff, man. I thought, like, <laughs> I would have thought that Richard, from knowing Richard, I would have thought this guy could be an actor, but like, man, that you must be nervous or something because, uh, no, jokes aside, anytime Richard asks me to be involved in something, I say yes and then ask for the details later because he's involved in so many good things and this is just another one of them. Um, I'm going to try and keep it moving because while all that information is important, I know you guys are here not for Melinda, not for Richard, and not for me, but to talk to the next guy, Tyler McKenzie. You're going to hear me hit this a couple times. Um, and I'm going to hit it uh, right now. But right now, you can text to give. Obviously, if you're already in this uh, chat, we appreciate you. You have helped donate to Bloom here. An awesome, awesome cause. One of my favorite things I read off their website is so simple. We believe in the power of community. And mm -hmm. Richard knows this. It's one of the reasons he asked me. I grew up in this rally community. I believe in this rally community. Any good that we're doing comes from community. And I love that Bloom here is built <coughs> off of that. Uh, but text right now to give more. 919-892-6709. 919-892-6709. Or visit bloomhere.kindful.com. You're going to hear me repeat those, but that's the only reason I'm brought in here is because I'm good at reading ads. Um, <laughs> hopefully tonight, I apologize for my background. It looks a lot real sportsy. That's what I do normally. But if you'll see, I've got the Hamilton Playbill in the background. I am a huge musical theater fan. And that's why it is my honor to introduce our star of the night. Uh, we know he's a world-class actor because of his resume, which includes the national tour of Matilda and the national, international, and Broadway performances of Mamma Mia and the touring and Broadway productions of a little show you might have heard of called Hamilton. But that, that would like suggest that he's good, but we really know he's good because <laughs> he spent time in the Old North State getting his, getting his education at Western Carolina under Terrence Mann and Charlotte Dembois and also performing in stages in Charlotte, Raleigh, and Durham. Our star tonight, he's our performer. And I say performer because I want you to know this. He said, I don't want questions in advance. He said, give them to me cold because I want to perform tonight, not just read a script. So these are honest, earnest answers you're getting from our man, not only from his time on the stage, but from what social justice looks like from the stage. Mm -hmm. He is the Tyler McKenzie. Tyler, thank you for joining us. And let's pick up where my inadequate biography left off and start <laughs> with this. Tell us your story, Tyler. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Hi, so many <laughs> faces. Oh my gosh, um, it's so good to be here. Um, I come from you right today from State College, Pennsylvania, um, but I'll share a little bit of how I got here. Um, I grew up, I was born and raised in Long Island, New York. Um, I was always singing, always dancing, always putting on a state, putting on a performance, yeah? And then my parents decided to move to North Carolina. My mom and dad met at Rikers Island. My mom was a pharmacist, my dad was a deputy warden, match made in heaven, and then we um, ended up moving to Charlotte. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I moved to North Carolina. I was a city boy and I was like, what are trees? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Um, and I went to a performing arts school, so it, it's just in my blood. I was always putting on a performance. Um, I was always storytelling. Um, 
And then I ended up at Western Carolina University. I auditioned for like 20 schools, y'all. And I decided that the mountains were the place for me. Um, that Asheville area, there was just so many, there was so much creativity. You can't beat in-state tuition there. So that's amazing. Um, it's a real thing. You got to think about it. Um, and right after college, I went straight to um, Mamma Mia, um, the national tour. I opened up a brand new company in 2013. Sing singing and dancing to the music of ABBA for like two years was like very exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Um, and I ended up getting a call to transfer to the Broadway show. I made my Broadway debut um, with Mamma Mia. And soon after that, I've done a couple of things such as cruise ships and and uh, regional gigs. Um, and yes, you're so right, Hayes. I have been able, I've been blessed to be able to perform on some in some big houses, especially in North Carolina, whether it be Durham, Raleigh, or Charlotte all three of them with different shows. Um, so if you've seen Matilda at, I think it was in Durham. Oh no, it was, at, it was in Raleigh. Matilda was in Raleigh. Mom was in Durham. And Hamilton was in Durham. It's so difficult to think to- It to, is, it is. Yeah. Um, and then Hamilton was also in Charlotte. Um, but after Matilda, I was into, um, I went into Hamilton. Um, the Broadway show was, exciting and um and exhilarating but also Hamilton was one of the hardest shows I have ever been a part of there's just so much information and so much choreography to learn um alongside all of my performing um education became very very uh important to me even when I was in college I what I felt was missing in performing arts education was the invited and safe space for young artists to bring in whatever is going on in their world onto the stage, into the dance studio, into the acting space. Um, there was this idea that you had to be perfect and you had to have nothing going on, when in fact, that is actually an, a hindrance to your storytelling, a hindrance to your... Um, to your creativity. The, the women that Bloom here works with, they have incredible stories to tell, incredible challenges, as well as wins. And for someone to- <laughs> Just texted. Oh. Someone to think, oh, yes. For someone to think um, that you have to act as if none of that ever happened um, is, was something I saw and something I knew that I wanted to contribute to positively. So since college, I was always holding space for young artists specifically to bring whatever it is they're going through in the world and bring it into their art. Tell the story honestly and know that you're not playing a character. You're playing a human being. You are human first and you have so many stories to tell that you can weave in to the the text on the page, the movement that a choreographer is giving you. Um, so that is how I've became the, the educator that I am now. Um, since then, since the pandemic and all of that, um, I have since um, out of the, it came out of nowhere. I have since um, gotten the opportunity and the offer to be uh, a dance professor here at Penn State University. Um, so my husband and I, got up from our Harlem apartment, which we were so happy to be, be in, even during the pandemic. Um, and now we live in uh, State College, Pennsylvania, and I am teaching every single day at Penn State in the musical theater department. Um, and I'm still, it still rings true. I allow, I invite the students to, especially now when there's a lot going on in the world, Feel your feelings, bring them into the room, and let's create art. Let's celebrate what 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 um, milestones you have made? Yeah, let's let's reflect on what are the challenges that you've been through in your life, and let's create art. Let's let's take personal responsibility and find the the next ring on the ladder, and let's climb above and let's really celebrate. Let's really um, let's really step on top of anything that's happened in your life, but let's not forget about it. Yeah, because it 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 made you who you are today. I so wouldn't say it's 
<laughs> coming out of nowhere, Tyler, there's obviously a reason that you were a guest lecturer at Penn State, and it's because your talents go beyond just performing on the stage, and we're already seeing some of those that we will continue to. Let me remind folks right now, if you want to ask questions to Tyler, get in the chat. I will go to your questions first. Uh, I've got some that I want to ask myself, but get in here. That's part of the reason you're here to ask about his performance on the stage, to ask about social justice. Let me start right here just to sort of personalize it. I know we've got folks joining us from literally around the world, around the country. The yeah. Bloom here is located here in Raleigh, uh, where we have an awesome community and we're doing good work. And we'll give you a pass. You do not have to remember the difference between, and I won't even say I'm right, but the the Durham Performing Arts Center and the Duke progress are like they, they have similar names it's hard to remember and raleigh and durham are right next to each other so we're gonna give you a pass on remembering which time you remembered on which stage but i gotta start here are you wearing carolina blue tonight as an homage to the old north state tyler is that what the blazer is it's not intentional but i'll go with it okay all right so and well, let me continue that question. What do you rem remember about your time here? Because again, you talked about growing up in New York and obviously I'm gonna pull to it because I'm a North Carolina guy, but I don't make light of it. I know that obviously your time spent in North Carolina was hugely influential on you, uh, not just when you come and visit and perform here for weeks at a time, but I mean, wh where you go to college, that matters to everybody. And you're making a huge impact on college students right now at Penn State. Well, what do you remember about your time spent here in North Carolina, either at Western Carolina Carolina or in the Triangle or in the uh, greater Charlotte area performing? Well, um, I think <laughs> it's amazing because I know that one of the core values of Bloom here is um, community. And anytime I'm either performing in um, North Carolina or my growing up, um, especially when I was um, on tour, whenever I would visit, I always had a place to stay because of um, a connection that I made within within school or anything like that. I'm here today because of a connection that I made whilst I was on tour. So it's just like you cannot beat the fact that yes, you are like suburban communities, other than like city, city communities, there's this idea that you're always stuck in a car. I know I've had that that horrible idea, but for some reason, I always tend to make incredible collective of friends and connections when I'm in uh the North Carolina area. Um, so community is such a big thing here. I, I don't know, maybe I gravitate towards that. Um, maybe it gravitates towards me, but it is definitely something in the water for sure. Community is such a big, big core value here. It's a core value for Bloom here, obviously. And um, there's a reason why we're all here today. And I recognize a few faces, you know? Um, I'm getting a serious question out of the way. And again, jump in right now if you want to the chat, ask some more questions. And I've got some already coming. And also, don't forget, text to give 919-892-6709 or bloomhere.kindful.com. Um, I'm going to start with a serious question. We might hit some, uh, some more fun questions later on. This is maybe the most simple question I'll ask you, but also <laughs> maybe one of the most complex. Uh, yeah. Social justice is a term that's thrown around a lot now. It's heard so much that we can almost become num numb to it. It's yeah. got two words that make it up. Social, which if you think of alone can mean one thing. Justice, if you think of it alone, mean one thing. Yeah. What does social justice mean, uh, Tyler McKenzie? Yeah, you know what? Thank you. I'm so happy you asked that. I'm so happy you phrased it in a way that um, I think some people, when they think of social justice and how they can be, how they can affect it, they get overwhelmed and then they pull back. But what um, specifically with Bloom here, they were specific and they focused on one area. Yeah. And if everybody does that, we all create a better world. Yeah. No one can do it by themselves. No one can take all on the big complexity that is social justice. So my focus is making sure that any city that I go to, any student that I have an interaction with, no matter where they are from, or their background, they know that they have an opportunity to either perform or be an audience member. Because with Hamilton, the reality is because the ticket is so expensive, you only see one type of pe person. Yeah, this aud audience does end up looking the same. So I wanted to make not my, I wanted to make art. I wanted to make uh, training accessible to as many people as I can. So 
social justice to me looks like diversity. It looks like accessibility. It looks like in, it looks like um, inclusivity, equity. Um, and one one way that I practice that specifically during the pandemic is I built an online training space for those young artists who whose shows were being canceled, who weren't able to go to their dance studios, who weren't able to do their fall musicals because school was um, now virtual and they didn't have access to training anymore. And I decided to um, do just this on Zoom, um, teach dance classes, vocal classes, acting classes, um, and make all of my classes pay what you can. So no matter where you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what you can afford, I'm gonna make sure you're able to get high, high quality New York City training, whatever that means to you, Broadway training. Um, from some, some, sometimes you pay thousands of dollars to take an hour and a half class with someone who has done the shows that I have done. But I looked at the pandemic as my biggest question was, okay, how can I give? what can I give? Um, I'm great at technology. I'm, I, be, I believe in my teaching skills and I'm not doing poorly as far as financially or anything like that. So I, this is an opportunity for me when I'm not doing a show um, to give, give my time, give my, uh, my teachings, give my inspiration um, and allow students, invite students to create in their bedrooms, their garages, their outdoor spaces um, and not have to pay hundreds of dollars for it. Um, so social justice to me, especially on the stage, looks like making, it looks like the vision is that whoever is in the audience no matter what color they are, no matter their sexuality, their age, their background, they can, they know that there is a spot for them at the table. There's a spot for them on in center stage. There's a spot for them backstage. Um, yeah, equity and inclusivity when it comes to arts is, is my idea of social justice. Uh, I like your terms there, equity and inclusivity. One of the things that I've learned recently in doing podcast rally is for a long time, I've thought I was a good person because I said, yeah, anybody's welcome to be involved in what I do, be sports or podcast or whatever. And the thing that, I, that has opened my mind to and what I hear you talking about is it goes beyond uh, anyone is welcome. Like that, that's a good, that's a one good step. Like everyone is welcome to what we're doing. And, and like rally would like to say we're a city yeah, everyone is welcome here. But the step beyond that, that I think is some social justice is, is this designed to include all? You, you know what I mean? Instead of just saying, oh yeah, yeah, you can come jump in my, and, and this is, continues to be true, my sports radio show that's, that's a bunch of white guys. Yeah, you, you're welcome to come into us. We're, we're very welcoming. We're not turning in one away, but was it designed for people? So my, I, I got a question for you as far as, Hamilton was a show that was designed Yes. For, for, for all to be included. I look at you specifically, and, and, and you can swat me off and tell me if I'm totally wrong here, but as an actor, you know, uh, as a black man, I've seen you play in uh, a chorus line or rent, and there are roles in some of those shows where it's like, you know you're only trying out for the black guy role. Like, like the, you're like, oh, I could be this guy and this, or I could be that guy and that. And then Hamilton came and blew the doors off, and it was like, yo, this is not... Any, yeah, oh yeah, you're welcome to try out and we may cast you as when we need the black guy or the, you know, this guy, but it's the, this is designed with you in mind. Um, can, can you talk about your feelings when you saw uh, a show like that take the stage at Hamilton with an, an alternative casting? And not, not that there were other shows that were predominantly black, but specifically when this one, it's almost a, uh, you know, a rewriting of history in some ways and how it was cast of saying, hey, this wasn't just, hey, you can try out for the black guy role, but this is designed with you in mind of like, everyone is welcome to try out and be a part of this. What was that feeling when you first saw the show with that kind of cast? Hey, is you're so good at this. This is, <laughs> Mal <laughs> this is, <laughs> no, no, no. so good at this. Um, it was the most incredible feeling to know that um, any role, any track, 
in Hamilton was on the table for me, not just, and I'll be honest with like Mamma Mia and, and Matilda, that you knew what the black track was, you knew who the black role was, and you knew that that was the only thing you could be considered for just because of how it was built. Hamilton, it was built for anyone, any, any color, any race, any background to fill the spot and to tell the story. That's it. Like, as long as you tell the story impactfully and from a place of truth and honesty, then you're right for the part. Um, and I think there was a, there was actually, it was easier. I wouldn't, it was just a breath of fresh air. And I think I performed better knowing that I had a ton of options whilst going in for such a big show. I knew that, well, I can, I can, they, they're going to see me for any of these roles or tracks and it doesn't it's about how I perform and how I how I show up today and that's all in my control so that's the comforting part it's not about I guess I'm only right for the black track that's not in my control I didn't make those rules but when you walk into a room like Hamilton for that audition which was very quick by the way because I was the my track was needed to be filled very very fast um I knew that the possibilities were endless. And as long as I got my sleep, as long as I did my meditation, as long as I did my yoga before the, the before the audition, then everything else was, I, I, I did what I need to do to prepare for the part and for the tracks. Um, so I just had to perform at my best ability. Um, and it ended up going beautifully. Um, and you're so right. There are shows that are, you know, predominant, predominantly black. But the reality of that is that a lot of the shows that are predominantly have black cast members, um, they're all, they ask you to be someone else. The Temptations musical, Ain't Too Proud, those are all real people who existed um, and black people who existed. So you're, you're, you have to really act like that person. There's a Michael Jackson musical coming out. You have to act like those characters who actually existed. Um, and then the other side of it is musicals like The Color Purple and all of that, they ask for you to um, bring up a lot of trauma that has been in your life as a, as a person of color. Um, Whereas Hamilton, these are characters, yes, these are people who actually existed, but you're not asked to move exactly like George Washington. You're not asked to move exactly like Hamilton. You're asked to, um, to in, embed yourself into what it is they were feeling. What was Hamilton feeling at this part, at this part in time? What was Eliza Hamilton feeling when she realized that Hamilton was being like unfaithful. You know what I mean? We all go through stories like that. And um, we know what it is to feel a sense of, you know, a sense of um, like those feelings. And we can embed all of the reality that happens in our world into um, the story that we're telling. Um, so I say that um, to say that there are shows that are being created like Hamilton that allow you to bring your most authentic self to the part and to the stage. Um, it is so refreshing. And I hope that more of that happens, especially when Broadway and shows open back up. I'll tell you that I was in Raleigh. Um, I was in Raleigh right when everything hit. I was at New North Carolina theater okay. and I being um, uh, Memphis the musical, um, and we were um, Eric Woodall is the artistic director yes. of the theater, and him and I go way back. He actually cast me in Mamma Mia on Broadway. How insane is that? See, awesome. North Carolina always. Um, you can always trust in North Carolina as far as community, you know. Um, but it was, and that show is definitely about. Um, that time period where there was segregation and um, and we're still seeing a, a lot of those injustices today. Um, and, but it was such a fun musical. I'm so sad that we weren't able to continue on with it, but I digress, but North Carolina, that's just to say, I'm, it's my life always brings me back to North Carolina. I'm actually going back to North Carolina in a couple of weeks to teach at Blumenthal Performing Arts Center. So, oh, you can always find me somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Uh, reminder for folks right now to text right now, 
919-892-6709. Give $5, give $50, give $500. Let's get this up and up and up. Uh, we're going to keep doing these with Tyler McKenzie. These are great. Bloomhere.kindful.com. It's so cool to hear you talking about uh, trying out for your audition at Hamilton. I'm going to try to go to the questions. I want to ask my own questions. I want to be selfish in this, but people have questions. I also want to let know right now, and, I, and this is my first time ever doing this, so pardon me if I'm not getting it right, but somebody is following Papa Murphy's lead. Woke, W-O-L-K 360, will match dollar for dollar the first five hundreds of kindful donations made during tonight's event with Tyler. So go ahead and give right now. Again, bloomhere.kindful.com or 919-892-6709. Your money is now double for the first $500. So just give five bucks and it becomes 10 bucks. Um, I'm, uh, we're we're going to keep doing that. I, I want to go to some of these other questions. Uh, what, I, and I'm going to ask you towards the end of what we can all do to be more involved, but I got a specific question here. What advice do you have for people who want to act more? Like if they want to get into acting, be acting, like how did you find that passion? How did you develop it? W what about people who don't even think that they're actors? How do you act more, Tyler? Um, the first step, because this is how my process is, my method of teaching, is to never feel like you have to forget your own stories. I think there are a lot of dancers who want to dance, but they don't, they can't, they don't want to call themselves a dancer because they don't either look like what they think a dancer looks like. They don't, they haven't taken a bunch of classes, but you're a human. You love music. You love stories. You also have a lot of stories to tell. That makes you an artist right off the bat. The sharing of it is the excitement that is an, being an artist. Yeah, so one, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what challenge is and what wins that have happened. Celebrate that. Be grateful about that. And be grateful for everything, whether it be positive or negative. Write it all down. Then you'll, you'll notice that when you read back your, whether it be your journal entries, whether it be whatever comes from your mind, a, that is what a monologue is. Yeah. Um, and what I'm telling um, my students who are actors is to stop acting, is to rely on your honesty and your truth that has happened in your world already. So a lot of you are probably already closer than you think. Um, and I will also say there's a lot, there's a ton of, it's, if, if you want to train, and spend some time like exploring, putting all those fundamentals together and finding out different methods. There are tons of online um, like master classes and uh, virtual um, camps for all ages, adult, young adult, all of that, I promise you. Um, for you to explore what it is like to, um, to be an artist and to create. Um, there's nothing wrong with gathering a few friends picking a play, going on Zoom, and everyone finds, um, everyone chooses a character, and you just have a play read. That's being an artist right there, yeah? Exploring what it is to say words that are not your own words, but you understand what the character is going through. You understand what it is to feel sad, happy, disappointed, excited, nervous. You know what I mean? They're, they're feelings that we all feel. Put that into the character. Um, I, I can't, I am so happy about my friends who have, I've done shows with who are creating space online for more people to train with them um, for a very affordable uh, like ask as far as financial. Um, and it's really cool to see. So I would just do some digging. There are tons of virtual opportunities and I have a very, I'm pretty positive um, and optimistic when it comes to this type of this world that we're in right now, I, I know things will get better. And I know that we'll be back in on stages very soon. And I know that North Carolina specifically has a ton of performing opportunities around the area for you to explore for you to be a part of a community and it be low stakes, you know what I mean? And for you to explore what it feels like to be on stage, you can do it. I promise. <laughs> Um, Tyler, thanks again. Reminder, 919-892-6709. You can text to give right now or go to bloomhere.kindful.com. I hate to make it about sports, but I feel the same way. We're like, when you think 
sports in America. The first state you in, don't think of as North Carolina, but on the sneak, it's like really, really good college pro. And I think theater is the same thing. We're like, we mm -hmm. think, where do I go to do theater? You're like, I got to be in New York or I got to be in LA. But it's like, I don't know. There's a lot going on here in North Carolina. Um, so right now, also a reminder for the first $500, we've probably already matched it. Um, so that doesn't mean you shouldn't stop giving, but shout out to WOLK360. They're matching the first $500 given. Uh, a question we've got here from the audience. Um, moving to New York from North Carolina is obviously a, a transition. We know it's great here. You may not have known it was great until you got here. What was the t tougher transition? Moving, be, becoming a New Yorker and moving to become a North Carolinian when your family moved here or moving from uh, I'll call it an amateur stage, but I feel like any stage is a, is a big stage if you make it stuff. Going from a college stage to a professional and or Broadway stage, like what, what felt like the bigger transition? That's a question we got from the audience, Tyler. That's a very good, that's a very good question. Um, I think what was harder was since I was younger, I was like about 13 when I moved to Charlotte. Um, moving is difficult especially for a young a young person in general and i will i will say that was the harder part just to get acclimated with everything leave friends and leave a, a more like hustle and bustle area which i became i was born into so it was it's nothing you know some people like don't love new york because of that and i thrive in it and i get a lot done but i also appreciate living here in state college where there's a lot of trees and i obviously love Asheville and all of those areas because I spent a lot of time in them. Um, I will say that my training with Western Carolina University was so um, intense and it was a conservatory style training whilst being in a liberal arts college that I did not see a difference between my treatment or my work ethic on stage in North Carolina than I did when I first hit um, like a, a professional stage after college. Um, funny thing, it's technically South Carolina, but I teched Mamma Mia when we were doing, when we were on tour, I, we teched um, at, at Clemson. So I, we just, that area is just, I keep coming back to it. Um, this, it's out of control, but um, the, I owe it all to my training at Western for setting me up for success to not feel like I had no idea what I was doing when I set foot on a an actually professional stage and being paid to do so, um, they set me up for success. So I, I owe it all to them. Very cool. Hit us up with questions in the chat um, and reminder, go to bloomhere.kindful.com. All right. Uh, everybody knows about Hamilton and knows obviously it's got history and you can see the themes in it and it's easy to see social justice from Hamilton, the way it's cast, the way it's written. What about plays that are just for fun? I mean, you did Mamma Mia and not to say that there aren't serious parts of it, but like most people think of Mamma Mia as like, oh, it's the music of ABBA. Like I'm here to have a good time. Like how are you delivering social justice or delivering a serious message when you're just on the stage doing something fun like Mamma Mia? Well, it's funny because I've directed Mamma Mia twice since okay. I since I uh, was do I did it I've done it many many times um, I've done I think six productions of Mamma Mia um, which is wild um, and what I as a director what I tell the the artists that are in that my cast I tell them that some people come for the ABBA. They come for the, the the party. They come for the disco music. You know that that type of feel. But you'll you'll always find those people who are leaving crying because they understand what it's like to have a. They understand the mother daughter relationship that's embedded in the show. They also love how um, the 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 women do not rely on the men. They're actually, I, they actually steal a lot of the show and it's just so fierce to see fierce and strong women in the show um, because you don't come across that very often in musical theater. It's the, the woman is always playing the, uh, the damsel in distress or they need the man to, and then they end up with the man and then that's the show. But this show is just all about like the women driving the show and it's so incredible. Very cool. All right. I'm yeah. going to go bro Broadway nerd on you here. I got to ask this question again, sports stuff in my background. Forget that people who don't, people who know me know that I'm a huge Broadway nerd. Um, 
favorite role that you have played and then role that like dream role of a, of a certain uh, cast that you'd love to play? I will say my favorite role that I got to play, there's two of them. Um, in college, I played Angel and Rent um, and that was awesome. That was so much fun. Western Carolina had such an incredible rent production of rent. Um, we actually had uh, a Broadway cast member um, come down to North Carolina and direct the show, which was brilliant. Um, second role that I thought was really fun to play. Uh, it was fun to be the villain for a little bit in Hamilton on Broadway. I played George Eaker. Yes. He's the one who kills the son at the end. <laughs> So I it was really interesting for me to be that person walking out of the stage door at night and people are clapping. And then there's those, the, 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 the younger audience members were like, oh my God, he's the one who killed the son at the, you know what I mean? So to be that villain, if you will, um, a, 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 a role that I would love to play. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll play it when, once things open back up, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I would love to play Simba in The Lion King. Um, that would be so awesome. And um, yeah, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Is there a performance of that that you saw that you were like, when you saw it, you were like, I want to do that? Um, I've seen it before because I had a friend who a friend who was in it. And that was the first time I saw it. But I've also been in for it a lot. I've also auditioned for it a lot and been seen for the show. Um, and it's just one of those things where you kind of just have to wait your turn. Um, and then, you know, now that things are happening in the world where Broadway is closed, who knows, maybe that'll be my turn will be for won't be for a long time. But I'm I'm hopeful. I'm very cool. excited. <laughs> cool. Reminder, text 919 Don't just Don't just ignore me when I'm saying these ads. Listen to them. 919-892-6709. Text right now to, to give because Tyler is doing an awesome job and he's an awesome dude and we want to see him back on Broadway. And we're going to inspire him by how much we give to Bloom here tonight to get that Simba role. Bloomhere.kindful.com. If you want more info, Go to bloom-here.org. Uh, again, I, I won't read you the whole ad. You didn't come here to get an ad about uh, what they do, but they do awesome work for women. And uh, we, we let off with a little bit of the details. Melinda talked about it. Richard talked about it. It's just supporting women. I mean, and right now with everything that's going on in the world, we can realize why women need more of our support. Uh, one of the things that stuck out of me, I, I read their, their, uh, their, uh, website. And I was like, let me try and grab onto a couple things. We believe in the power of community. Um, I am passionate about the Raleigh community and what we can do to help women who need help. Go to bloom-here.org if you want to read more about it, about the, the oils that they sell, about the great work they do. They're not just handing out money. They are helping craft a new life for a lot of women. But go to bloomhere.kindful.com right now. Give some money. Um, Tyler, I want to ask you this question. Yes. It seems like every night, like you've got a script and you've got your, your cues and your choreography and you just go out there and you're supposed to perform, but you're not a robot, obviously. We know that we see you're a human, but when we talk about delivering social justice from the stage. How do you do that when your, your lines are scripted for you, your cues are made for you, your choreography is set? How are you delivering social justice from the stage when as an actor, you know, yes, you're embodying some of these things, but a lot of it's written mm -hmm. for you. How, how are you delivering that message? That's a really great question. Um, a couple of ways. Um, a couple of ways is showing up 100% or whatever your 100% is that day, showing up as much as you can when you're performing because you just never know, I just never know when there is a little black boy in the audience who is a little unsure if he has a spot um, on in musical theater. And if I half-ass it and don't give it my all, that could make or break his decision. Yeah, but if he sees that light, if he sees a presence on that stage and sees people who look like him, who are thriving, that could inspire him to do the same. It doesn't even have to be musical theater. It could just be saying yes to something, um, really putting it, putting his all into a project that could, you know, change the rest of his life. Um, and then 
I can't um, lie and say that social media is not a very powerful tool, especially when it comes to the theater world and the industry and being a part of one of the biggest shows in the universe. Um, so your followership is very um, important and making sure what you put out into the world virtually and on your social media that it is um, intentional and that it is um, aligning with your core values. So with mine, it's positivity, it's outreach, it's supporting initiatives like Bloom here um, and sharing their stories. And it's also um, making sure that I have no unread messages from those young artists who have those questions about college, about I don't feel good enough for this. I have to, it is my duty to social justice to reply and let them know that they can. Yeah, it is so important. And I think Bloom here is doing the same thing for these women who, who are feeling less than or like others, they have provided space. So um, I hold space, yeah. Um, very cool. Question from the audience. Uh, aside from what role you would like to play, we got some great answers there. And I can't wait to see you as Simba in The Lion King when Broadway is back, baby. Um, what's your favorite musical in general and, and why? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> this is funny. Um, I was obsessed and pretty much still am. They made a musical out of the Bring It On movie. Um mm. And it was with Kirsten Dunst and yep. uh, it was, oh yeah, everyone has seen, I hopefully you've seen Bring It On, the, the movie, Gabrielle Union, everyone. Um, for, the, for those who don't know, that's Lin-Manuel was, uh, did yeah. the music for that one too. So it's like, even before he was known, if you go back, you could see sort of the roots of Hamilton in some yeah. of those shows. So yeah. You really are a musical theater nerd. Hey man, I wasn't, you look, you thought that I was just brought in and I was like, oh yeah, I'll pretend like I'm a musical theater guy. No, man, I am all in, baby. I'm you, a big fan. Uh, we could be here all night. This is great. We might. <laughs> um, I was obsessed with it. And yes, that was right way before like Lynn was this big, huge thing, way before Hamilton existed. I was listening to the musical all the time in college and I wanted to be in it so bad. Um, I actually went out to audition for the casting director who was um, casting Bring It On um, what, right when I had graduated from um, Western. Um, and I was like, I, I'm gonna go in for this casting director. She's also casting Mamma Mia, but I'm not right for that show. What's Mamma Mia, who cares? I wanna be in Bring It On. Of course, the weekend of auditioning for her, I, I'm on my way back to this gig that I was doing and I get a call that I was gonna be in the the new tour of Mamma Mia and not bring it on. And I was like, damn it. But I was like very happy to be a part of a show and to be working so early on in my like life post-college. But my favorite musical, bring it on. It's so fun. If you don't if you have the chance to listen to it, friends, I would totally recommend it. Especially if you're into Hamilton, you will Hayes is totally right. You can see, you can hear notes and tones and rhythmic patterns that are embedded into Hamilton. So people think Hamilton, like, no, like he, they, he has been experimenting with that stuff since bring it on. You'll totally hear some of the parallels. Go for go, it. Go Bye. and throw in the Heights in there too. It's another one that like, I might not have opened my mind to if I didn't know Hamilton was awesome. But then once you like working back to the roots of Lin-Manuel is, is, is great. So uh, now you're, you're spot on on that. All right. Another question from the audience. Uh, what social justice programs are you involved in or do you support aside from bluehere.org? And before you answer, reminder, text right now. Yeah. You're, enjoy, you're enjoying this performance from Tyler right now. Text 919-892-6709 to give to Bloom Here. Support women in Raleigh uh, who are seeking to better themselves and better our community. We believe in the power of community. Uh, Bloomhere.kindful.com. Uh, what other social justice programs are you involved in, Tyler? That's a good question. And I will, I'm going to answer that really quickly right after I say, like, Please, yes, that number and that um, that website, what I've loved doing is sharing. So there's tons of people who are being thrown, they see all these ads for different initiatives and different causes, but it always helps to have like a friend or a, a loved one 
recommend something because they know that it's near and dear to your heart. So take if it if it if you've already given, um, make sure that you. S- share the link with people who are not here today, um, who are like desperate to give and don't know where to start. Yeah, um, I think it's the perfect, that is the perfect way to, um, to, to, uh, to affect this positive change that is here at, at Bloom Here. Um, let's see, what other ones? One thing that I was super, super into, especially during Hamilton, was Edgeham. Um, and we actually did it in, I think we did it when we were in Durham as well, and Charlotte. Um, we would do a Wednesday matinee, um, and it would be for the junior junior year high school students from uh, Title I um, high schools in the area. Um, So most of these students had never seen, never stepped foot in a theater before. Um, But the the history of Hamilton and the founding fathers were were um, put into the curriculum. They created projects. It was in it was in their history classes and they got the chance. um, Excuse me, the opportunity to come and watch our show for free. Um, and uh, um, it was the most fun I've ever had. And we did it on, we do it on Broadway. We do it across the, the United States. Um, so Edgeham was a huge social justice initiative that I loved. Um, we we held, held space for certain um, artistic projects from the students and they came up on the stage and presented, whether it be a rap, a poem, a song, a skit. Um, again, these students may have never set foot in theater and then they were able to, one, see Hamilton and some of them were able to be on the stage performing for their peers. Um, let's see, other ones that I am, other social justice movements that I'm a part of right now is Entertainment for Change. Um, they are great. Um, they hold space for a lot of young artists as well. Um, and that's really fun. Uh, when I was in New York, I did a lot of volunteer work for Covenant House, um, which does a huge like sleep out program. Um, and it's, it's definitely for, um, uh, especially for youth who are homeless or, or in troubled communities or households. Um, and that's been so, so much fun to be a part of. Um, but right now I'm with this new, with this new, um, new life that I live, I've just moved here mid August. So I, I am brand new to, um, state college. I've had such a great time, um, giving my time and focus to bloom here. Um, I, uh- stand for them for those who missed the beginning tyler is a broadway actor but right now he is in state college pennsylvania i won't use the biggie smalls line about penn state but that's <laughs> but yeah, yeah for, forget that but uh you, we might have to make you a football fan if you're if you're there at penn state but no he is a guest lecturer at penn state university uh, that's how good he is his skills are not just used for performing but for teaching others how to perform all right and i'm probably supposed to like smoothly hide this but i'm not good at being smooth so i'm just going to be open the text line may not be working perfectly because it's 2020. So if you already texted, we need you to go to bloomhere.kindful.com and reiterate what you were going to give on the text. Do it online right now, bloomhere.kindful.com. We'll take all those gifts. Special shout out to W-O-L-K, Woke360, who's been matching any offer up to 500. Uh, We're getting some great donations already. And obviously, folks who are already in here have given. It's been awesome. All right, a couple things. Uh, This this should be an easy one for you, Tyler. Uh, Did you grow up knowing you were going to be an actor? Did you grow up, like, singing and dancing all the time? Or at at some point did you discover that this was the skill that you had and sort of realize that's what you're going to focus on? Um, I was always singing. Singing was always a thing. Um, I just, I loved music and I think that's where it stemmed from. I wanted to be a recording artist um, or what my idea of a, of a recording artist was when I was younger. But as soon as I moved to North Carolina, especially with the, um, it has a huge, huge um, competitive dance, like there's a huge competitive dance community here in North Carolina, there in North Carolina. Um, and 
as soon as I saw my first uh, group of friends dancing and rehearsing, I needed to do that. I needed to find that way of storytelling with my body and with movement. And uh, I put myself in classes every single day. I had just as busy of a of a high school career as I did a college career. I was everywhere. Um, and it just so happens that I trained so much that I, I guess I, I loved it so much and I, it was just a part of my, my being um, that every show after college, it was, they, they were huge dance shows. Um, so that was very excited. They're very exciting actually. So yes, from, my, from, a little, from a young age, I was always singing singing and dancing. Tyler McKenzie joining us, a, uh, not only a Broadway actor, but now a guest lecturer at Penn State University. All right, we're, we're kind of nearing the end of our time. I think we're going to go a little bit over because we got some great stuff to continue to get to. But let me make sure I get this question in. Uh, we can't all be actors. We can't all be on the Broadway stage. Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. Um, how, how can we all be involved in helping uh, move forward this social justice movement. Obviously, you're using your talents. Um, yeah. How how can uh, the average? Uh, uh, I don't want to say that we're not. None of us is average because we're all unique, right? Um, how can we, wherever we are, whatever station we are in life, whatever our job is, even if we're you know boring old Richard Avert uh, out there who's just pushing <laughs> pizza on the rest of us? And shout out Richard Avert again. I, I can only make fun of him because uh, I know that my man does more good than I would ever aspire to do. Um, even if you're just a guy that's pushing pizza, how can you be involved in advancing social justice? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be financial. Yeah, this is incredible that we're giving um, out anything that we can as far as our financial commitment um, tonight, but there's nothing wrong with contacting Bloom here and asking, how can I give my time? How can I give, how can I support? I'm sure, especially when things open back up or even now, I'm sure there's something that can be done as far as like energy, as far as sharing. Social media is so powerful now. So even if you don't have the funds to give, again, I think sharing and reposting and really paying attention to what Bloom here stands for and putting that and putting that on your channels. Um, it's, it's, it's just always, I know it's helpful for me to find, see a friend and see what they support. And that's easy for me to then say, okay, cool. They, they support this. I'm going to support this too. Yeah. Word of mouth is so powerful. Um, so sharing and giving your time, if you have it, is just as important. I think that is so, so great. And because you're here today, um, it's the, it's a, it's, one step in the right direction of being focused and not overwhelmed thinking that you have to be this and this healing thing that that you you don't have to be expected to change everything in the world but this small but mighty um change here today is so impactful so relish in that be excited about it and give focus and attention and support when you can all right, we are going to go a little bit over. I might be selfish and reserve the last question for myself. But again, I want, I want to remind people. First, I want to thank so much for the people who have already been a part of this. Of this. Uh, Tyler, starting with you. I mean, just hearing your story from the stage is incredible. Seeing what you do is incredible. Seeing you give your time to Bloom Here. Um, bloomhere.kindful.com. If you are on this right now, if you're hearing my voice, you already paid to be here. So we appreciate that. If you can give another $5, another $50, another $500, if you're able to go to bloomhere.kindful.com, please do it. Um, it, it just, you won't know the impact you make for these women in Raleigh. Um, I, I, I won't lie to you. I have not worked with Bloom here that long. So I'm not gonna sit here and give some huge testimonial. What I do know is Richard Averett is a dude who does good in Raleigh. He asked me to be involved in this because he does great things. And anytime he says, will you help with this? I say yes. And also I know the Raleigh community is a great one. And I see on Bloom here's website, we believe in the power of community. These are women that they are helping to be part of this community that's already been so good. It's helped raise me. It's helped be a part of Tyler's uh, career. 
uh, Melinda, Lisa, Richard, Sarah, all these folks that I see involved, they are great because of the Raleigh community. So if you can help in any way, you don't even have to know exactly what it's going for. You can read about it at bloom-here.org. You can buy the oils that they sell. That, all that stuff is great, but just know that you're giving to a great cause. Bloomhere.com.com. All right, I'm going to be selfish and reserve the last question for myself, but we've got a couple other great questions that I want to get in. Uh, Tyler, this is a great question that we're asking in all kinds of fields, uh, sports, social, news, and in theater included. Uh, do you envision some of your virtual outreach efforts continuing when the pandemic is over? I mean, you might have never done this if the pandemic hadn't started, but now you are teaching virtually. You're teaching, like you said, a uh, pay what you can type classes. Are those things that you hope to continue even when the pandemic is over? And sort of what lessons are you taking forward from this? Yes, um, I think so. I, I've also been a part of um, a company called the Broadway Collective. And we, um, there's a ton of my colleagues um, that are in the Broadway community and we coach students online. So students who are, who do not have access to, who don't have as big of a theater community as say Durham, Raleigh or Charlotte, um, they're able to access training from us via, um, the internet um and they've been doing that for a few years even pre-pandemic and i think it is so important for, to give access to people who can't necessarily act, have who don't have access to a huge theater community um so i think so yes um i have built a studio um here in my house so that i can affect i can effectively um and impactfully teach virtually without um, and it be quality. Yeah, um, I'm focusing on the quality of it as well. Um, so I, I definitely plan to continue my virtual training for well, sure. Obviously nothing replaces live theater. Um, we can't wait to get back to that, but obviously the, you continuing that is great. All right, Ephraim, five years old, wants to know, and I mean, like, seriously, I could do two hours straight on just total Hamilton fanboy questions, but I know we're trying to be bigger than that. So Ephraim is embodying the questions I want to ask. What's your favorite <laughs> song to dance to in Hamilton? Oh, it's so good. That's such a good question. There's so many, but my favorite, um, because it's such a cool sequence for those of you who have seen the show or even heard it, because when you hear it on the cast album, it's spectacular. Um, Helpless Satisfied is so awesome. The rewind section when you rewind. see the show is so, yes, rewind. it's so magical. One, when you see it, too, when you're in it, you're just in this different world. Because for those of you who have seen the show or have not seen the show, there's a huge turntable in the middle of the um in the middle of the uh, stage. So you helpless is all from the point of view of Eliza. Yeah, and it goes around, and we do we do her point of view, and then we rewind it. So we are taken back ahead of time, um, before that time, and then we see the entire thing happen from. Angelica's point of view, and it is so awesome. They, the creative team is so genius for creating that. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. So help us satisfied. Uh, I remember walking away from the show. Uh, you know, I knew the songs going in. I didn't know the choreography, but b being blown away by, it, I don't know whoever came up with that rotating thing in the middle, but that that is. Gosh. It's such an integral part of the show. I mean, so many times walking or like you said, the rewind, it's just, and, but also like, I can't imagine having to do choreography around that. Like not only oh, learning to dance, but like, Hey, if you, if you step off by six inches, you're getting caught in something that's taking you the other way, man. Like, is that, is, is that scary dealing around a, a rotating floor? Yes, because also, yes. Like we were just saying earlier about the um, text link, it is 2020 and <laughs> Sometimes the, the the turntable would go the wrong way. It would speed up a little bit. Um, we've even had a couple of injuries, um, but I won't like throw all that at your face. Sure, but sure, sure. It 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 is definitely something to get used to. Um, with the brand new with the new company, if you all saw the show in Charlotte or Durham, um, you saw a brand new company. It was the Philip company and we were in it from the beginning. Um, but when we rehearse, we rehearse in a huge space in New York City with a turntable on there. So we are able to rehearse with the turntable, which is 
amazing. It is such a privilege. It is such an honor to be able to get that really good time with that with that turntable. We call it the donut um, because it takes a lot of time to know how to walk onto it while it's moving and then walk off of it to standing st like standing still. It's wild. It is a lot of core work for sure. I can't even imagine. All right, last push. Bloomhere.kindful.com. Give right now. We've been getting some great donations. We got people matching. Uh, not only can you give right now if you watch this on replay, if you're listening, you need to stop right now and give to bloomhere.com. Don't make me go into my sports radio like bloviated <laughs> overopinion.com. All right. Because I'm the MC, I'm reserving the last question for me. And my hope is, Tyler, that we'll do this again in the future. We'll talk yeah. some more about Hamilton. I love hearing those moments about like the, 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 the turntable, the donut. Now I know what it's officially called. Yeah. Or un unofficially by the actors. Um, <laughs> I uh, had the uh, pleasure to perform in Ira David Woods, A Christmas Carol, which people should know was also co-written by Terrence Mann, one of the people who trained you. Um, very cool. I mean, this is a guy who's done the, the highest of the highs at Broadway, Les Mis, Beauty and the Beast. Here in North Carolina, uh, he's done The Lost Colony, and he's one of the people that helped train Tyler, who is now on the next generation of people who not only are being great actors, but training the next people. Yes. Being in that show, uh, it's a community theater thing, so I was lucky enough to be in it with my late sister. And there was a cool moment where we would go in like from dancing into a freeze and I, and I'm making this way more about me than I needed to be, but we would go into a freeze where my sister and I would almost try and like get to each other. And like, we knew we were supposed to freeze, but we also would kind of try and make each other laugh. Like that was kind of like our freeze moment. And then we would have to like force each other to like freeze during the laugh. My question for you is doing Hamilton. Is there a single moment that stands out for you every night where it's like, this is the moment that, that helped me realize, like for us, it was, we're lucky to be on this freaking stage and that Ira David Wood III and that Terrence Mann wrote these plays that we can, you know, do other things, but have this community theater um, moment. Was there a moment for you in Hamilton? And we're talking about, you're reaching the, you know, again, not to make it a sports thing. We're talking about players in the Super Bowl, players in the World Cup, reaching the highest peak of their profession. You have been on Broadway in Hamilton. It doesn't get any higher than that. Is there a moment in that play where you, you know, would every night pause and say, this is why I do what I do. I'm going to remember this moment every night. And before you answer, because I think this is going to be a good one, bloomhere.kindful.com. Donate right now specifically for this great answer that I know Tyler is going to give. Is there a moment in Hamilton, if you've seen the show, if you listen to the soundtrack where you can be like, this is where Tyler stopped and said, man, I have you know, reached the pinnacle of what I do. Not only am, if I achieved a lot, but this is going to inspire me to achieve more. Is there a moment for you like that in Hamilton? Um, yes. And I will share that really. I will also say that, um, <laughs> I must give a shout out to Bloom Here's Oils. And I am not being paid to say this. My hands are here. I did not get a, I did not get a text message or anything like that. But um, one thing that has kept me going through my performing career has been yoga, meditation, and the use of essential oils. Um, and I had the opportunity and the honor Bloom Here sent me some of their product. And if you are someone who wants to support and receive a product that you will be using a lot, I will say, please check out the oils because it, they are so, so, so great. Um, I use them every single day and I'm not joking. I'm not doing this to be, to be the influencer that I am. <laughs> I just have to shout that out because I, if I were to say that I'm not wearing them right now, right now I'm wearing hope. It is energizing. It is so freeing. It's so cool. Um, and I would be I would be so mad that I didn't like give a shout out to the, the product that comes with this as well. Um, with, with um, Hamilton, the, the part that I, um, and you can only, I guess you can only experience it when you're in the, uh, when you're in the theater. And maybe for those of you who, see, who saw it and maybe Hayes, you experienced this, the lights go out and the crowd goes wild before print before um the king's voice comes on and says ladies and gentlemen 
and the entire audience just loses their freaking minds. They're so excited. Some of them have been waiting two years to see the show. And I'm sitting, I'm standing in the wing, like ready because it's blackout and we have to we have to enter on certain parts of the stage, though you don't see us, but we have to be ready to go on as soon as um, the music kicks in. Um, but everyone goes wild because the, the lights go out, you hear King George and he says, enjoy my show. And the, <laughs> just goes wild. And then the first thing you see is Burr walk out and everyone is going crazy. And then it goes dun, 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 dun. dun. And then it's out of control. And then you're just ready for a three hour show because the, the reality is that the show is very, very hard. Yeah, it comes with the glitz and glam that is being part of a really awesome show and being a popular show. And we we like to think that we make it look somewhat easy, but it is so difficult to do that three hour show eight times a week. Um, so yeah, that the audience makes it worth it. So we love, some people come to the theater and they think that they're expected to be like these very quiet and very contained, but we love it when you think of it as a concert. Like, go crazy. And I'm sure, Hayes, I'm sure you were going wild when you saw this show. I could Multiple just... Multiple times. It. I can see it in my head. Um, but yeah, that was the moment, the beginning of the show. It, it, uh, it's amazing. I, I've tried to, like, do the time track and be like, I think... I don't want to say it and be wrong, because in theory, I'm supposed to be a journalist. But, like, I think I saw you on Broadway... Uh, as George Eaker, but I, you know, you never know exactly what nights people are performing, but I think that might be the case. Um, what, what's the program behind you? Where's that from? Uh, Where I think this one's from Chicago. That was the first time I saw it. So I, I did not, but, but I can, we've talked and I've done the dates and I've been like, wait a minute, 2017, okay. you know, early March. I think that I saw, you know, I think that might be the case. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey man, we, we've gone like 25% over what we wanted to do. But uh, like I said, we, I could talk to you all night uh, about Hamilton and, and yeah. beyond Hamilton, just the work that you're doing um, to help push forward, not only theater, but social justice in the theater. It's so cool that you've been called not only to be an actor, but to be a teacher of actors. And it's one of the great thing about uh, actors is that you could continue to do both. And I know that you will continue to be a Broadway actor, be a national touring actor, but also help bring along the next step. Yes. Um, you, you mentioned the oils, hope, love, and faith uh, from Bloom here. Again, they are, uh, they're not just, I, I don't want to downgrade any charity, but this charity, is, this nonprofit is doing great work and, and helping people put their lives together into meaningful ways, into developing these oils that people like Tyler are using. I wish I, I, I might become an oil user. Again, I don't like to lie about anything. I don't like to lie and say, oh, I tried the oils. I have, I've never used any oils. If I used any, it would be, now you said hope. I'm going to start with the hope oil for Bloom Here, Tyler, based on your recommendation. You Last will. plea from me, bloomhere.conful.com bloomhere.conful.com. We've got so many great donations tonight. Many of them will be matched. So again, after this ends, if you're listening to this on recording, uh, you can give $5, $10, $50, $500. And there's a good chance that it might be matched. So it'll be double whatever you are giving. Yes. Bloomhere.conful.com. If you want to just read more about it and be more impressed with what they're doing, bloom-here.org. And again, I've said this many times. I know I sound like radio guy who just reads the ads, but I swear I read through the, all their online information myself and I picked up what stuck out to me. And we believe in the power of community. Um, they believe in the women that they're helping, but they also believe in the power of the theater community, the Tyler Inspires, the Raleigh community, which is so great about supporting folks. So please, if, if you can, again, just be, being here today, we know you've already donated, but if you can donate some more, bloomhere.conful.com. Tyler, are we going to do this again, man? I had some fun. I hope you had fun. I'd love to. I love, I love chatting. I love chatting about this. So we can I, turn it on. <laughs> I feel like I like like in the meetings I was sort of like okay yeah you know whatever but like I was like L just know when it's when it's go time I'm gonna be asking my my guy Tyler questions about Hamilton and about dancing and singing so we've had some fun tonight um, 
We, uh, Melinda, do you want to close us out or, uh, or well, I didn't else? know if y'all needed like another four hours. Well, we might, I mean, we can do it. I can take off the jacket. I wasn't we can, sure. We can keep going. <laughs> we can keep going. I mean, we could just start karaoke. Um, I can play half the parts. Tyler can do the others. We could do that. <laughs> hey, I adore you, Tyler. Oh my God. Both of you. Um, just thank you. Wow. <laughs> I, I, um, I was here sitting managing to a lot of texts that I didn't expect and all of them were, oh my God, oh my God, this is amazing, this is amazing. Um, yes. One shout out real quick I'd like to give is that the Bloomies are on here. And to the women that are in the house and they just thanked all of you publicly and said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you um, for your belief and for your love and for what you guys are doing for us. Um, so amazing. And yes, so all of you know, um, we are going to continue this once a quarter. I mean, how can we not, first of all, um, sure. you know, we, I, I little well evidently Hayes and Tyler have a relationship now so it's fine but what but hey don't move into my space with Tyler um <laughs> what I will say is that um this has been great I I've loved every bit of it um thank you so much Hayes for leading and then Tyler for answering and just being so off the cuff I, I do believe, Tyler, that you will be in Lion King for the fact that I was at the first 25 years ago Lion King production. So what? therefore, I know you will be in there. Um, I'm just so excited. I want to go into, as we wrap up, um, thank you everyone for being here. A lot of my dear friends, I have friends from California that are here. I have friends that are in Boston from here. We have Raleigh that are from here. So it's just like, it. it everybody's here so worlds are colliding and it's awesome 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 and we have a couple more events that are coming up um that i want you guys to know about so and they'll go on our website i think lisa you're going to put them up right now um we've got um thursday october 15th another event called beads we also have another virtual cooking class october 25th well and all of you will let you know that when that when they come but through email and everything but just so you can go ahead and save the date mm -hmm. um but i just want to go reiterate and i know we've kind of talked about it but what we are doing here is we're supporting raleigh and supporting the community of women and so there are ways for you to be able to donate and we have those ways as kindful.com which we talked about we also have ways of amazon you can go on our amazon wish list which is bloom here it's awesome click 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 away i love to click i don't know if any of y'all do on amazon i'm sure you do and then we also have um, our amazon smile if you sign up for our charity to be amazon smile every bit of your purchases we get five percent back and that means a lot to us. So that's some different ways that you can. Also volunteering. We have an incredible base of volunteers. I will let you know that our awesome um, volunteer coordinator is on tonight. And hey, hey, Jean, I'm giving you a call out. I love you. You're the best woman ever. <laughs> um, so just want to let you know there's a lot of ways that you can help us. We so appreciate all of you being here with us tonight. I can't wait till the next one. Um, Hayes, I'm sure you can't wait. Um, I, I, yeah, right. I see the excitement. Tyler, I can't wait to talk to you and, and we have to talk when you're coming into town so we can yes. have dinner. <laughs> no, Hayes, you, no, no, Tyler, we're having dinner. <laughs> I'm you going, up, Melinda, you, you can pay, but I'm coming. Me. You can't upstage me at that dinner. I'm coming. But, but I will say to all of you, um, just namaste, namaste. And that means to your heart, to mine. And Thank you for um, your support and your love and your belief in this mission and knowing that we are um, changing lives and, and we are doing it all through the community. Yeah. Yeah. I love you all. <laughs>